Good evening. This is Agashwani Kohima. I'm Jonas Yantan with Evening News. The headlines. Supreme Court refers petitions challenging validity of electoral bond to a five-judge constitution bench. Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia says we need to make health care affordable and accessible. Minister for Women, Resource Development and Horticulture Salhotonia Cruse says Nagas should empower themselves with necessary knowledge and skills to capture job opportunities in construction. And Nagaland Board of School Education announces schedule for Phase 2 of Class 8 and 9 final examination. Now the news in detail. The Supreme Court has referred petitions challenging the validity of electoral bond scheme for political funding of parties to a five-judge constitution bench. Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chantuchut said the matter will be heard on 30 October. In the previous hearing, senior advocate Prashan Bhushan had said that the matter needed adjudication before the electoral bond scheme opens for the 2024 general elections. The petitions against the electoral bond scheme focus primarily on two issues, the legalisation of anonymous donations to political parties and the violation of citizens' right to information about the funding of parties. Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare Dr Mansuk Mandavia said we need to make health care affordable and accessible through holistic development of robust health care infrastructure. Speaking at the launch of inauguration of healthcare infrastructure projects in Assam today, Dr. Mandavia said healthcare infrastructure should consolidate integration at block, district, and regional levels to monitor surveillance of any new variant or disease entering our nation. Emphasizing the uniqueness of India's healthcare system, Dr. Mandavia stated that India has its own model of health that is congruent to its needs, strength and abilities. 48 people from the Western Angami region have completed the first level of skill proficiency management for building and other construction workers, Advanced Training of Trainers, TOT, 2022-23. They were trained on plumbing, tiling and electrical for a week from Konoma village, which started on October 9. The training program was sponsored by Nagaland Building and Auto Construction Workers, Welfare Board, NPO, CWWP, and conducted by the Xenoric Initiative Society, ZIN. Minister for Women, Resource Development and Horticulture, Salhotonio Croce, gracing the closing program as the guest of honour, emphasised on the importance of skill development training. With government jobs which has reached a saturation point, Cruce said it has become crucial for Nagas to empower themselves with necessary knowledge and skills to capture the job opportunities in construction which is being currently captured by people from outside. She said when one is equipped with the required skills and techniques, it will pave way for personal growth as well as professional advancement. Congratulating the trainees on successful completion of the first level of the training, she also advised them to continuously evaluate and identify areas for improvement and seek further training to grow professionally. The minister also thanked the NBO, CWWB and ZIS for conducting the training program for the people. CEO of Nagaland Building and Other Construction Workers Welfare Board, Juba Younger, Ayer said, the government has been conducting several trainings for its people, however reminded that the people must have the desire to learn and upskill themselves. He said construction is the biggest industry in the state of Nagalin, wherein 25% of the construction cost is being spent on labour payment and added that this could be ours if we can replace workers from outside. Giving a brief highlight on the training programme, Chairman of Xenoric Initiatives, Richard Belho, said the training has been conceptualised along with the district administration and line departments. Following the training, the trainees will be registered under Labour Department soon. Belho said this kind of training programmes, although are often expensive, has been conducted free of cost. Encouraging the trainees, he said people must be disciplined, value time and money respect the uniform and strive to create an ecosystem while assuring help in the form of 
hand-holding for the trainees to establish themselves. Later, Minister Crusay gave away the completion certificates and tools including pile cutter, hammer drill free of cost to the trainees while best trainees were awarded with an extra tool of circular saw. This news comes to you from Akashwani Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on news on air app and YouTube channel AI News Kohima. Nagaland Board of School Education, NBSC, has announced the commencement of phase 2 of Class 8 and 9 final examination, scheduled to begin on 30th November. The exams of both Class 8 and 9 will conclude on 8 December. NBSC has directed all the private schools registered with NBSC to conduct phase 2 of Class 8 and 9 examination as per the schedule given by the board. NBSC said all the schools should internally conduct the examination for the Nagalin Heritage Studies, English and Local Dialect, Life Skill Education and General Knowledge. The board also directed the schools to submit the consolidated marks and results of Phase 1 and Phase 2 examination to the board through the portal on or before 18 December. NBSC further said that the examination routine will not be altered in the event of any unexpected holiday. NBSC, however, said that in case of cancellation or postponement of the dates of examination, the board will notify the candidates through the media. U.S. President Joe Biden today said the terrorist organization Hamas does not represent all Palestinian people. Biden insisted that Hamas should be entirely eliminated. On the other hand, he warned that the Israeli occupation of Gaza would be a big mistake. Biden said he supports a humanitarian corridor that allows people to get out of Gaza as well as the delivery of humanitarian aid, including food and water. Biden added that he was confident that Israel is going to act under the rules of law, a war. This comes amid criticism of Israel for floating all international norms since the beginning of the conflict. Other prominent people who called upon Israel to open humanitarian corridors include Pope Francis. The pontiff said humanitarian rights must be respected, above all in Gaza, where it is urgent and necessary to guarantee humanitarian corridors to help the entire population. The Vatican has offered to mediate in the crisis. Chief Minister Nipirio has called for a meeting with all line departments and sectoral departments on 18 October in the Secretariat Conference Hall to discuss the status of preparation and roadmap for celebration of the Hornbill Festival 2023. Chief Secretary J. Alam, in a circular, has requested all concerned departments to attend the meeting positively. Chairman Committee on Public Undertakings, Imkong L. Limjin, has convened an oral evidence come adoption meeting for the examination of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India report on 18 October. Representatives of National Handicap Finance and Development Corporation, Nagaland Industrial Development Corporation Limited, Nagaland Handloom and Handicrafts Development Corporation, and Nagaland State Mineral Development Corporation Limited under the Department of Industries and Commerce and the Department of Geology and Mining are asked to attend the meeting. Imchen further requested the administrative heads of department, heads of department and managing directors of the respective departments and corporations to positively attend the meeting with all required supporting documents for dentering evidence before the committee. And now it's when the news here the main points again. Supreme Court refers petitions challenging validity of electoral bond to a five-judge constitution bench. Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia says we need to make health care affordable and accessible. Minister for Women Resource Development and Horticulture, Salho Dunya Cruse, says Nagas should empower themselves with necessary knowledge and skills to capture job opportunities in construction. And Nagaland Bodo School Education announces schedule for Phase 2 of Class 8 and Class 9 final examination. That is all we have in this evening news bulletin. Good night.